Good evening, everyone. Welcome to meeting number three for the Castanea Estates Community Boundary Study. My name is Dr. Wheatley Phillip, and I'm Executive Director for Research and Strategic Planning as part of the Division of Research, Accountability, and Assessment for Baltimore County Public Schools. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide the opportunity for members of the community committee members specifically to engage in conversation, discussion, and also decision making so that we have one scenario that moves forward to the board as a recommendation from the committee. Leading this work is Ms. Melissa Appler, our coordinator for strategic planning with the office. Ms. Appler, along with members of the strategic planning team, Mr. Godfreyson, as well as Mr. Brocado, have worked to organize and put together all of the materials that committee members need to really facilitate this decision-making process. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Appler, who will lead us through the process. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming back to our final meeting of the Cassania Estates Boundary Study. Um, so here is our agenda for this evening. Uh, we're going to go and review uh, some of the updates, some of the questions you asked from the last meeting, and go over the survey results. We're going to review um, a new and re uh, new scenario as well as a revised scenario and give you an opportunity to look at those. Um, we're going to break out and do some small group discussions around those scenarios and give you an opportunity to review those survey results, um, then do a little report out and finally voting on the final recommendation, which goes with our goals for tonight, review the work and data, um, review the new and revised scenarios, discuss the scenarios um, in small groups, and then finally vote and recommend one option or one scenario to move forward to the Board of Education. So just a little overview of where we are in the process. We're in meeting three, um, the last one up there, um, and then we will make that recommendation tonight, and then it will go to the, the board recommendations on February 5th, and then they will have a public hearing on February 20th uh, here at Mays Chapel, and finally the board decision will be March 5th. Uh, so the online survey results. Uh, so what we found there was the online survey began the night of the public information session on October 29th and ran through November 12th. There were 99 respondents to the survey um, and the data is aggregated and summarized in a report that you have in your packets this evening. The information is also provided by school so you can see the by school results and this survey will also, um, the survey report will also be available online for those at home or in the audience. Uh, the results do not constitute a decision, but really are be to be used as a uh, decision-making information to help you inform your decision about what the larger community thought and what some of their feelings were. You'll also see in there that there's a comment page so that um, on certain survey questions they were allowed to write in um, information, and you'll have that in there as well. Um, the public was asked their overall opinion of how they felt about a uh, scenario. And um, generally, the results were uh, mixed. We showed results mixed on these uh, scenarios. And scenario B was the most in favor at 48.5% and the least opposed at 31.3%. And again, like I said, um, the breakdown by school of who um, was thinking or had opinions about in favor or um, not in favor um, are in your survey report. So the primary reason for supporting a scenario, for option A, the primary reasons were that it would maintain uh, community continuity and provides transportation efficiency. So the main reasons for uh, favoring option B were maintains community continuity and provides reasonable future uh, existing and future utilization of the schools. Of those opposed, their primary concerns for option A were that it does not provide reasonable current and future school utilization and uh, does not c maintain community continuity. And then option B was uh, does not maintain community continuity and uh, does not provide transportation efficiency. And it really, it will really help you once you um, see these results by school. Um, you'll be able to see who and which feeder patterns are really favoring or not favoring a certain option. So just to go over the scenarios again, scenario A takes the whole entire Castanea Estates development and moves it into the feeder pattern for Delaney High School, Mays Chapel Elementary School, and Ridgely Middle School. 
Now, we have a new revised B tonight. So at the public information session, um, we heard some community feedback asking about there was uh, previously the little, there was like a little square of a one personal, um, one person's property in the, the middle of this um, scenario. And when we went back to, um, we did some research with the assistance of Baltimore County Planning and their property, um, individuals and we looked at the development plat and found that the parcel that's actually surrounding that um, piece of property, that smaller square that was in there, was actually conveyed to that homeowner. So that is not part of the Cassini Estates development and you can see that in that um, boundary. And so we made a revision to the scenario B to exclude that property since it is not part of the Cassania Estates development. So you can now see that there's a larger green section that would remain um, in the Delaney feeder pattern. Um, it does not, uh, the rest of the scenario would go into the Pikesville feeder pattern, Pikesville Middle, Pikesville High School, and Fort Garrison Elementary School. And the high school feeder, the feeder patterns would require transportation uh, changes. Now the new scenario, is B1, it's a, a variation of B. And what this did is when we were looking at that development plan uh, to verify that, that other piece that was actually owned by the Lee property, we found that this lot down here where you see the dotted orange line that's coming out, that is lot 40 of the Castania Estates development. And lot 40 actually does not connect or go into Castania Court. The, based on the development plan, it will share a driveway with the existing house that's in there and will exit onto Falls Road. So we thought it would be, um, we wanted to present an option for you to keep those houses together since they don't exit on uh, Castanea Court and they exit on Falls Road. So this scenario would maintain all of those houses that exit on the Falls Road would stay in the Delaney feeder pattern and everything uh, else would go to the Pikesville feeder patterns. Does anybody have any questions about this scenario this time? Okay. Well, we'll be around when we break out in this um, groups to answer any questions you have. Okay. So this actually shows private parcel, the existing private home, the shared driveway that comes out um, into the Castanea. And you have copies of these maps also in your meeting materials tonight, so you can see a zoom in. So just to go over the transportation um, a little bit, the, under the Delady feeder patterns, scenario A, B, and uh, B1 would not require any changes to the transportation patterns. But under the Pikesville High School feeder schools, you would not need any changes under scenario A. But under scenario B and B1 would require changes. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Kenny, Mr. Kenny West from Transportation to come up and talk about what changes would be required for that B and B1 scenario and give you also a little overview of the cost estimates that are involved. Good evening. My name is Kenny West with the Office of Transportation. So it might be easiest to go over option, I'm sorry, scenario A. And that is where um, the Cathania is zoned to the central area, which is Delaney, Ridge, Ridgely, Ridgely Middle, and Mays Chapel. So as um, Melissa mentioned, there would be no appreciable change to any transportation patterns because there's an existing bus that travels southbound on Falls Road. So the bus would simply, simply make an additional stop to service the Castanea area. Scenario B, with the schools being, um, the, the residential area being zoned to Delaney, I'm sorry, to Pikesville High, Pikesville Middle, and Fort Garrison, there would need to be a change. Currently, the existing route for Pikesville High, Middle, and Fort Garrison, the bus runs along Broadway and it turns around and goes back the opposite direction on Broadway. So it never actually touches Falls Road. So it picks up along both sides of Broadway. And that's important because the same route, we presume, would travel along Broadway and make a right onto Falls Road and then immediately service the Castaneda area. Our challenge then is finding a location to turn the bus around. So we can continue down Falls Road southbound, and there's no good area to pull the bus off and turn around 
because we didn't want to make a left onto Falls Road at this point. Um, we have the, just the speed limits and the, the traffic patterns in the morning will be difficult to pull a bus out and make a left onto Falls Road to go northbound. So we, at this point, are projecting to continue down to Seminary, find a place to turn around, go back up Seminary, make a right on a Falls to go northbound. So it does take the bus out of the way a little bit. It adds some miles and some time, time to it. We would then come back up Falls Road and make a left on Broadway to service the other side of Broadway. So from a, one, one second, from a dollar standpoint, um, we were asked to look at how much do we think that would add. Um, if we're just looking at um, a minor reroute of the existing bus, um, once you accumulate the additional miles and fuel and time and so forth, it will be a minimal cost. We're looking at a couple thousand dollars over the year, which um, adding that to a route is a very small cost. If we found that it added too much time to the route to get to Pikesville High and Middle one time, because it is a combination run, if we found that it added too much time and it wasn't getting to school on time, we would then need to potentially add or, or modify an additional route or put another bus on the road in that area to be able to reduce the total ride times for both of those buses. That then, we're looking more in the between the thirty-five to forty-five, fifty thousand dollar range to add a bus on for um, another combination bus for Pikesville High, Pikesville Middle. Yes, sir. You had a question. So we know we can do it off of seminary. I didn't look at, um, I, I don't know exactly where we would turn around. Um, we know we can do it once we're on seminary. It was not an option on Falls Road. Um, there were places to turn around on Falls Road. There was property we could use. There's roads we could use. Um, however, it's not in line with our practice to go into a lot of these cul-de-sacs. That we, that's what we'd have to do. Or we could ask to use a church property. We don't want to do that. But more of my issue was I didn't want to make a left turn. Once we did find a location to turn around off of Falls, we'd make a left to go northbound on Falls. And I thought that would be more problematic because of the volume of traffic and the speeds on Falls Road. But once we get down to Seminary, we could find a location. Yes. I think this is probably a really dumb question. Do children ever is it okay for children to cross the street to get a bus? Because then could you just get the eastbound broad, on your eastbound Broadway route, get both kids from both sides of Broadway, mm -hmm. and then take seminary back out towards Pikesville? Mm -hmm. So not dumb question at all. Why so, enough crossing streets is bad? No. So there's two things to take in consideration when crossing the streets. Age of child and um, actually three things. Age of child, speed limit, and is there a location to wait? So um, actually by state law, Baltimore County, we're actually named in the law. We have to look at the, the speed of the road. So at middle school and high school, they cannot um, cross anything over 40 miles per hour. So um, the issue with a lot of Broadway area is the location of where they could cross and then wait for a bus. So oftentimes in that area, we're stopping at houses because there is no place to actually walk on the road. So we also look at sight distance. Um, when vehicles are coming from Falls onto Broadway, would a vehicle see a pedestrian crossing the road? We take those things in consideration, which is why we currently have stops on both sides. Yes, sir. So, uh, the two maps that we have here in our packet are both for the Pikesville High bus route. Is that right? These are both Pikesville High. This is the current, this is the proposed. That's correct. Okay. So are you saying that you would go down, you would make the right turn on Broadway, come down, turn right into Castan, uh, Castania Court, pick up whatever kids are there, 
come back out to Falls Road, go all the way down the seminary, and then come all the way back up to go to Broadway to, to finish that route? Is so that, I mean, we, I just, I'm trying to understand. This. Sure. So the bus would travel down Broadway, make a right on Falls. It would stop along Falls until it got to the point where it could turn around. We believe that safe, safest turnaround area would be once it got down to seminary. And we'd find a location off of seminary. So the bus route for the uh, scenario A, which is not here, which is not provided here, that's the uh, Delaney bus route. It goes right up Falls Road. They would they would also not be able to make the left on Falls Road to continue on their route on the current route. Is that is that accurate? The current Delaney routes would just add a stop because they, they currently travel Falls Road. They would just add an additional sure. stop. Right. So, but would they turn into the the pro to, wait, would they turn into the project or would they stop on Falls Road, pick up kids, and then keep going? Um, we were asked that question as well. And that we would actually want to see the property. So we'd want to see the amount of space they'd have to turn around. I, I understand there is a small um, circle no, or something. I'm not asking for a turnaround. I'm, I'm asking how, how would it work? If, if this is one scenario that we're talking about, the other scenario would be it's in Delaney. You have the existing route that goes north on Falls Road, mm -hmm. correct? Would it turn in? Would it make that left across Falls Road to go into the project? Or would it just stop on Falls Road and pick up kids? So both routes would stop something? on Falls Road. Both routes fall. Correct. Neither so route currently, would turn in and go Correct. Out. So currently the Delaney route, there's one that comes down Falls Road southbound and one that goes northbound on Falls Road. So that wouldn't change? That, that, it would be no change for the pickup? If it stayed with Delaney... No, they're, they're, it negligible. would be so negligible. Um, it basically would be adding a stop to an existing route. As opposed to the other cost that you, that you had just uh, quoted for moving this project into the Pikesville uh, uh, schools, and there'd be a cost for, for the bus. Right. Our hope, obviously, is that we can take the existing route and modify it so the cost will be mi minimal. Um, but again, timing, we'd have to look very carefully at timing to get the, school, so the, the children to school on time. Yes, ma'am. I can look that up for you. I didn't. It's 2.5 Fort Garrison is 2.5 miles on a good day. And uh, Pikesville Middle and High School, 4.1, 4.2 miles. To, to Mace Chapel from Castaneda's one and a half. Ridgely 3.2 and Delaney 3.5. Other questions? Yes. When we did our first, when we had our first meeting, we looked at the times on the bus. In addition to the minutes that you were just able to quote, there was the time. I mean, the miles. There was the time on the bus. And that was before you guys went to this in-depth part of the study to go down further to seminary. So I remember thinking that the bus rides were long and in time. I, I know the miles aren't that much, but that the times was much longer to ride to the Pikesville schools. And I think that may have been before this was hashed out with the seminary turnaround. So are there estimates in how long the children would be riding on the bus um, to either of the elementary schools or middle schools or high schools for comparison? I did not do an estimate. I can, I can work that up very quickly, though. It would be a, a, an estimate, but I can work that up. That's okay. We had it from the first time, so it's probably only a short variation on that. I probably have it in my binder. Our challenge would be, as gentlemen stated, the challenge would be coming down Falls to make a left onto seminary, waiting in that traffic, then to turn around and come back. It's, the distance is not very far. It is the traffic that we'd be against the, the only option you would have in the morning is the subdivision on the right going down seminary seminary avenue it's actually mace chapel road on the right um the no, roads are narrow you but you can certainly sure. a, a skilled driver can turn it around but that traffic from thornton to the corner of falls and seminary um they're going to be very tough to let anybody in People are fighting for every inch on that corner. It's sure. really it's tough. I just can't imagine the logistics of the kids on the bus being 
you know, um, I think it probably would add another 40 minutes or so to their ride. It's a ruthless little corner there if for it commuters. Were, if the timing were 40 minutes, um, we would potentially even go farther to cut down time. So we would do our best to stay out of traffic. Um, but that would be the objective is to... But then it gets a little illogical. Yeah. Again, our, our objective would be to have students on the bus for as little amount of time as possible. Thank you, Kenny. Okay, um, so. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to break out into small groups, which you're already sitting into by your groups, um, and give you an opportunity to review the survey results and all the, the materials that you received to date uh, in context of the new transportation information you've got, review the revised and uh, new scenarios. If you have any questions, um, the team will be around to answer any questions you have. If you can, um, on each... Um, table, there's a sheet that you can fill out if we, you can list some of the pros and cons of the new scenarios, if you have any questions about the new scenarios that you find when you are talking as a group uh, when we get back together. Um, if the principal, uh, principal at a t each of the groups could act as the facilitator and the recorder for recording the information, and then we'll reconvene in about 20 minutes um, to do a report out on what your findings and any questions you might have. Yes. Well, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Ridgely parents that have filled out the survey that um, they were auditioned to Pine Grove Middle. So when they filled out their survey, they were unaware that we did have some overcrowding relief strategies in place. And I would just I'd point that out because I know that that was one of the complaints in the survey. And both schools um, have projected overcrowding, but, but our parents are unaware that there's a relief strategy in place for us moving forward. Thank you for sharing that. That is a um, very good piece of information that we all should have. Um, did everyone hear what she was saying about the relief strategies? Okay. Is there any other questions before we break out into our small groups? In virtual scenarios, I thought there was... Are we sure that there are no... There's a cul-de-sac that comes down. Um, it still looks like there's some parcels that are partly uh, Delaney Valley and other Pikesville. To me, for the, there is a road, I believe, that's going to be coming off of here, mm -hmm. and I believe there's going to be a cul-de-sac in here. Yes. But then that would mean that these homes It will be a cul-de-sac going from here into here. And if you want to see that, we can set it up in the back so you can see the detailed development plan. So be well away from the... Yes. Demolition. The only access will be... So this was the original, um, the original house that was on the property. Then they actually acquired this additional parcel. So all this is owned by the same person now. This is lot 40 of Castadilla, and it will share that drive here. But these are the only ones that will access onto this road here, well, out onto Falls Road. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. The one house we have pending in this state is definitely going to Delaney. In every scenario? But no, only in the new revised B1. But that was never, that's the one facing Falls Road. Correct. The, that was never part of the new housing yeah, development. No, this, uh, the one wasn't. So originally in the original B, before we revised it, this square here was an existing house. And this square and it was never part of uh, the Delaney. We never moved them. They always stayed as part of Delaney. 
Then when we looked deeper into and worked with Baltimore County Planning Department, we found that this part was actually conveyed to this homeowner in a later phase of the development. So now this homeowner here that has this property owns all of this. So all of this was, is not part of Castanea Estates. And really this boundary was just about addressing the Castanea Estates development. So we excluded all this so it would stay exactly what it currently is, since none of this is part of the Castanea Estates development. So then when we got to looking at this, we found that there was actually one parcel here, which is lot 40 of the Castanea Estates development. It's actually gonna share this driveway, this driveway that comes off of Falls, comes past this existing house is going to come up here to this lot 40 and that's how that one's going to access Falls Road. It's not going to come in here to Castanea Court. So just this one lot is not coming through Castanea Court. Does that make sense? Does that one lot mean B1? Um, what, do you, what do you mean? The one lot is just where we picked it up in B1. One of the options tonight is A, B1, or B1. B, B and B1. Yes. So in B, we don't pick up this lot 40. All we did was rev revise the original B to re accurately reflect this property owner's property. So in the original B, we only had this part as green, but in fact, he owns all this property. So all we did was make that correction of who owns the property. Yes. But then in B, does everybody understand? And then in B1, we actually took that one lot, that lot 40, and made it go to, uh, to stay since it egress. Because otherwise, in this one, we, we corrected the home ownership for this parcel to be included with this. But we didn't address lot 40 because this was the original B, and we didn't want to alternate, alter that for the Cassini Estates, because originally in the original B, you had this either flipping to Delaney or, or staying in Delaney or going to Pikesville. So then to actually, but you would have this one parcel sharing a drive with somebody who goes to a different school. So there we, we gave you a revision, a revised new scenario to consider that would then take this parcel so people on the same shared drive are going to the same school because otherwise you'd have a bus if you had kids in both of these properties you'd have a bus stopping for one school and then a bus stopping for the other kid who lives behind the other school so we wanted to provide that as a as an option does that does everyone understand that yes so so there's scenario a scenario b and scenario b1 correct and, and what about this little lot that's crosses the boundary, like we were talking about lot 40 here, but this one, what's that part? That's still part of Castanea. So, but that's not lot 40. Is that, how are no. they accessing off of Falls Road as well? That is, you're looking at B right now. This is the existing B. So B1 is the one where we revise right. that lot 40. Right. So is this part of lot 40? Correct. And that's lot, yes. so that's it's a so large lot. So when you, yes, yeah, so when you take it out, yes, it's a very large lot. Okay. And there's actually some really steep contours in the back um, it's very steep. And are we looking at, are we looking at yes. Yeah, and that's why we wanted to bring it to you because we wanted to give you the, the corrected B with the right property owners, but then also show you that, you know, that that one lot, you would have children on the same driveway going to two different schools. So we felt it was necessary to give you that as an option to, to make sure that that didn't happen. And that's what we need you guys to talk about and, and, and come up with that decision and, and talk about the pros and cons of those scenarios. Okay. So, go ahead. Real, real quickly, I found the stuff from the original study that we talked about the first meeting, and the miles are 2 miles, 2.2 miles to Mays Chapel and 6 miles to Fort Garrison. So that's before necessarily added mileage for the seminary turnaround and added time for the seminary turnaround is already almost three times longer in distance. The middle school and high school are 5.3 to 7.3 and 7.1, so they're much closer, but the elementary school was pretty disparate before we even heard about the new transportation challenges. Okay. So I thought that was kind of noteworthy. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Is the added cost for the bus routes per bus, so if you had to do an elementary and a middle high school combined? Kenny? 
Is, is the added, if, if you had to do an additional bus route because of the length of time the kids would be on the bus, is the thirty-five to 45000 you estimated per bus route, so one for elementary, one for middle, high school, or a total? So is it $45,000 or is it $90,000? Yeah. That would be total additional. So if you have a new bus route for the elementary and a new bus route for the middle slash high school, Correct. that would be 45, 35 to 45 total? Yes. Okay. Got it. And then even from that, we would try to use existing routes to modify them instead of putting another bus on the road. So yes. Right. Okay. Um, we're going to break out and do our small groups. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be around to answer those, and we'll reconvene in about 20 minutes. Thank you. Um, with the small number of students. So I guess we focused on traffic and transportation. I'm sorry. The orange group focused on the main issue of transportation and then secondary to that was the sense of community. So they felt that in scenario A, the bus ride, the length of the bus ride in fact would be less. Um, the Lutherville rec centers you know, are located in the Mays Chapel community. And there was a question about student safety um, and preserving that when a student needs to cross the street in order to catch a bus. Um, the pros from scenario A were then, of course, flipped as a con for scenario B1. We felt like scenario B should be thrown out altogether, that that really wasn't you know, anything that was viable. Um, one of the specifics that we talked about in scenario B1 is that according to the data, Pikesville Middle is currently overcrowded and the high school will be in 2019. Thank you from our red group who would like to report out? Thank you. <laughs> um, so it, we prob mainly concentrated on transportation because we thought that was the biggest um, scenario or biggest issue um, with scenario B and B1 adding a whole entire bus route or trying to figure out and having the bus not being able to make a left turn from the development onto falls to have to go down. And so I think that was a pretty negative to us um, because the kids are already on the bus already for an hour. Um, so to add more time adds stress to the kids and who wants to be late for their first period. So I think we were leaning towards more scenario A just because the routes are already in place. And as um, Dr. Byer said that it, it couldn't even you know, shorten their bus time. Okay. Did you want to ask? Okay. All right. Um, does anybody have any additional questions before I turn it over to Mr. Gottfriedson? Um, he's going to go through the voting process with you. Does anyone have any additional questions before we go to voting? Okay, so now we're going to um, kind of wrap up our, our study now with our nomination and voting. Um, as a reminder, the principals um, are not going to vote. Um, they participated throughout this process, but they won't um, be um, providing a vote. Um, at the end of our voting, the committee will recommend one scenario to go over the Board of, Edu Board of Education. And just as a point of um, you know, information, that the Board of Education will have access to all the information that you, you guys have had throughout this process. They'll have all um, three scenarios that were presented to you tonight will be presented to them as well. Um, and then just as a reminder, as you guys did through your, through your um, exercise, just remembering those um, considerations um, of Rule 1280 as, as you do your voting. Um, just to explain the process of how we'll do our voting tonight, um, what we'll do is we'll use your active vote devices. Everyone has an active vote device. I handed those out. If you're not a principal and you don't have one, okay, good. And then, so we'll do our voting in two rounds. Um, our first round, we'll, we'll, we'll have all three scenarios up for consideration. 
Um, you'll vote for the one that you feel is best meets those, those considerations that we've discussed throughout this process. Um, at that point, if unless there's one that receives a unanimous vote, um, we'll take the, the two scenarios that have the highest vote totals and do a final vote between those two to try to reach consensus um, of what we should take forward to um, the Board of Education. So, Chris, if you want to switch over to our active vote. Yeah. I think, I think Melissa clarified this, but last time there was some confusion because there was a majority in one vote, but because the other two were still significant, we went forward with both. This is anything over 50% wins at the end? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so once we do our final vote, we'll go, we'll go down to two, um, and then just whatever is the majority will be the one that will um, go forward. So go ahead and press the um, green button there, Chris. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we'll have scenario A is option A. Scenario B revised, as was discussed tonight. Yeah, so A, Delaney, Ridgely, Mace Chapel. The B revised, as was explained tonight. And then the B1, as shown tonight. Is everyone clear on the different scenarios and what we're, we're voting on? Okay, so Chris, if you want to go ahead. Okay, and it all, so all you do is you just press A, B, or C. You don't need to press anything to turn it on. It's, it's already on. If you change your mind as you do it, oops, I meant to do something different. That's fine, too. You can change it before we close it. Uh-huh. Does everyone understand um, the differences between A, B, and C? So A is for option or scenario A, B is for the B revised, and C is actually your B1. And you'll just hit that when he tells you to hit your yeah. A, B, or C. So you can go ahead and do it now. Um, if you're uncertain whether or not you've, it's been registered on the bottom of your device, there's a number that corresponds to a number on there. Um, we don't know whose number is who, so don't worry. We're not keeping track of that. But um, just, just so that you know whether you voted or not. So once everyone's voted in, we'll just give everyone a second. Uh, remember, A is option A, B, B revised, and C for option B1. So we got two more. Uh-oh, yours isn't lighting up. 18. Yeah, let's get you a different one. Here, Chris, we got to swap out um, 18. Let's go to what? Let's push in. 47. All right, there you go. All right, so everyone's good now anyone want to change their mind before we close this portion all right go ahead and close that Chris all right so we've got option a and option B revised so if you want to go to the next one Chris <clears throat> you just go forward Two slides, I think. And then do the button up there. Sorry. Or is it this button up? Uh, there. One more. Yep. All right, so here we go. So we'll go ahead and start this one live. And this will be our final vote. So whichever one gets the most votes this time will be the one that this committee will send to the Board of Education. Okay, device 50 is our last holdout. Just one more vote. There we go. Everyone good? Anyone want to? All right, so there we have it. Um, so, so option A will be the one. If Chris, if you want to, it'll all still be there. If you want to go back to the PowerPoint. So um, just a few things as we conclude here tonight. Um, I want to thank you again for your participation. We recognize um, there's some time commitment um, to come to these meetings to go over the material. We appreciate your um, ability to really dive into the issues and really analyze things. Um, the upcoming events, 
which you are invited to attend and encouraged to attend as much as possible, but not required like, like you were to these, um, the Board of Education will receive a recommendation on February 5th at the Greenwood building, or at the Greenwood Campus Building E at 6.30. Um, that's where we'll, we'll present to them um, the materials that we've gone over, the recommendation that you guys provided. The board hearing on February 20th will take place in this room. Um, this would be the one, if you, if you have to be choosy about which ones you would attend, I would, this would be a good one to attend to be able to provide your, your input as members of the committee. Um, unlike other settings, in this board hearing, everyone that shows up is allowed to speak. There's not just a certain number, so everyone that shows up will be allowed to speak. And certainly as, as committee members, your input is, is, is valuable there. And then, and then uh, following that, on March 5th will be um, the decision by the Board of Education um, at, at their normal business meeting. Um, go ahead and go on to the next slide. I got my slide here. So again, thank you for your participation. Um, thanks for um, being here every night, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.